Hey everybody, my name is Steph Koza, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to be talking about some spooky books, some spooky comic books that I read this month, this season, this Halloween season. My last video was about my spooky movies and TV shows that I watched, so feel free to watch that video if you have not yet. But now, today, we're going to be talking about books and comic books. The first spooky thing I read this season was The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer. This is a trilogy, the Mara Dyer series. There's also some other books in the series about some other characters in this world. But basically, this is a YA thriller, mystery, spooky, something or other. And it's about this girl named Mara Dyer who gets into some kind of accident with her friends and she's the only one who survives, but she wakes up and can't remember anything about it. She meets this mysterious boy who seems to know a little too much, a little bit more than even she knows. Then she starts to see all these weird things and she thinks she's going crazy and just more and more weird stuff keeps happening. And it's one of those books where you also don't really know what's going on because your narrator has like amnesia. So you're just kind of following along this weird story and you're like, is she losing her mind? Can I trust her? It's just kind of this unreliable narrator situation, which is really fun for a thriller because you just don't know what is happening ever. So I think it's really fun. I didn't really think it was scary or anything. I think it was just like a good kind of spooky mystery YA book. And I really enjoyed it. There's also a little bit of romance in there. It's like, you know, typical YA novel. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. I think I'm gonna read the rest in the series just to see what else happens. And maybe we'll circle back and I'll let you know what I think about it. <laughs> the next book that I read was Salem's Lot by Stephen King. I had never read this before. I actually am embarrassed to say I haven't really read a whole lot of Stephen King. I don't know why I love spooky things. I love all the movies based on his work. I don't know, they're always kind of intimidating to me. I never really had a chance to just like sit down and read them, but here we are, Salem's Lot. I'm also pretty sure this was his second book ever, which is kind of cool because he's written so many books. <laughs> so it's cool to like go way, way back and see kind of what he was writing back then. This book is very creepy, very gruesome, very chilling will say but you know it's Stephen King what what else would it be but basically there's just this huge terrible evil happening in this small town that our narrator lives in and he is there trying to write a book he's investigating this creepy house that he thought maybe would be good inspiration for his new book but instead he gets sucked into this whole thing where there's like someone gets killed and then he realizes that something is afoot and there's this huge terrible evil all over this town and he and a group of people decide to rally up and figure out what is happening in this town and why it's so evil and it's just one of those like slow dreadful just kind of dripping with horror books and it's really fun and I really really enjoyed it so there you go Salem's Lot I have one more book for my wrap-up video it is not spooky or anything so it's kind of an honorable mention but I did read it this month so I thought I should include it Right? And that is An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. Um, I don't have the jacket on my book right now, sorry. <laughs> I don't know, I'm one of those people who I just can't read a book with a jacket on it. It just irritates me, it's just like flopping around and I can't deal with it. So I always have to take it off when I'm reading a book and then I put it on when I'm done and then I put it on my shelf and it looks pretty and it's not ripped up or anything. But I just haven't put it back on yet, so I'm sorry, but here it is. Here's the spine. I mean, it's cool without the jacket. It has a little carl right there, if you, don't, if you know what that is. Um, but yes, this is Hank Green's first book ever. Um, if you don't know Hank Green, he is one of the vlog brothers. Hank Green, John Green. They're like one of the first YouTubers ever. Also two of my favorite YouTubers. I love them to death. John Green, his brother, is like the novelist. Like he writes books. He writes a lot of books. That's like his career. He's an author. He writes books. Hank Green, not so much, so it was kind of exciting to hear about him writing a book and coming out with a book, and I was like a little skeptical. I was like, I know John Green can write books, and I know you're really smart and articulate and could probably write stuff, but can you write a story? I don't know. The answer to that is absolutely yes. This is truly an absolutely remarkable thing, <laughs> this book. This was one of the fastest books I ever read. I don't know, it was just so easy to flip through. It was such a page turner. Every page I was like, what is happening? I need to know what happens next. I am super intrigued by this narrator who kind of becomes a little bit of an unreliable narrator later. You sort of even 
don't like her at times, which is really interesting. But then there are other times where I loved her. She was really funny, really bold, not really afraid to say what was on her mind, and very relatable as like a social media person. I don't know, as someone who posts content and looks for feedback constantly, as people do, like YouTubers and bloggers and what have you. Even just when you like post something on Twitter, you just like tweet something and you're just like waiting to see like, do people like it? Do people reply to it? This book really taps into that culture and that feeling and what that can do to people who become famous and it talks a lot about fame. It's really, really interesting because the book itself isn't really about that at all. I mean, it is, it 100% is, but the story, like the plot, is about like this weird robot man that comes to Earth and like aliens and shit. <laughs> so it's like these two really different worlds kind of coming together and it's this really fun sci-fi-ish book. What I'm trying to say is this is really fun. It's like a little bit YA, but it's also a little bit not YA. It's got a lot of cursing. I would say it's an easy read with a little bit more grown-up concepts, but also some not so grown-up concepts. I don't know. It's a good book that everyone and anyone can read. How about that? Read this book and you you tell me. I really enjoyed it. It's not super long. You can do it. The writing is spectacular. I love all of the characters. I just really enjoyed this book and I think you will too. So that's that. Next, let's move on to comic books. The first spooky comic that I read was Witches by Scott Snyder. Um, I don't really know why it took me so long to read Witches. I've heard so many people talk about how great it is, but I actually just joined a comic book club at my office and this was one of the first books that we all decided to read. So I read it and I really enjoyed it. First of all, I love the artwork in this book. It's really unique. It's very like, like bright, vivid colors, very bloody, but lots of like blood splatter and just splatter in general, like every page there's, there's a whole bit in the back about like the process of how they made this, but basically they drew every single page, like as, as one does, and then they like overlaid it with these watercolor splatters of paint. So every page has like splatter all over it, but it just has a really cool effect. I don't know, I was just really into it. It looks really cool. Also, the story itself is just really great. The, the villain is like these creepy witches as you might presume. And what's creepy about them is that you never really see them and when you do see them they're kind of warped and they're in the shadows and it's sort of left up to your imagination to like truly see who they are. And it's kind of like the idea that when you're walking through a forest and you like catch a glimmer of something and you get kind of freaked out because you're like in the woods and weird shit's in the woods and you don't know what's in there and you might think there's like some creepy tree person in there and that's kind of what the villain is in this book and it's really cool. It's also this huge metaphor about parenting and like the anxiety of being a parent and having a daughter who's just like running around possibly getting murdered by witches, you know, the usual. I don't know, I just thought it really captured the feeling of anxiety and of dread and of seeing something and your imagination creating this monster in your head. I don't know, it was just really good. And also, there is a new witches one shot that just came out on Halloween day, which is super exciting. I haven't picked it up yet, but I am 100% gonna get it because I liked this so much and I'm so happy that they are finally coming out with more. I think there's also a volume two coming out at some point, I don't know when, but I would highly recommend this if you like horror and you like comic books because it's both of those things and it's great. And last, I have The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. I talked about the show that just came out on Netflix in my spooky movies and TV shows wrap up, but of course I had to read the comic that it's based on, so I got it and oh my god, it is so dark. It, when I read this before I watched the show and I like knew the show was gonna be kind of dark, but like this is just bloody, evil, just dark. It is gruesome, it is creepy, it is so spooky, and I don't know, I just, I really, really enjoyed reading this. I thought it was so much fun. Uh, it says, prepare to have your socks spooked off, which I couldn't verify is Yes, that is a thing that will happen. I don't know, I just really like this. I love the artwork. It's very like kind of vintage-y looking, lots of oranges, kind of almost like a sepia looking thing. And then pops of red, like blood and whatever, what have you, 
red things. Sabrina wears a lot of red. There's a lot of blood that is red. Very spooky. I don't know. I just really, I think it was really fun. It was really good. If you're a fan of the show, I would definitely read this. It's very similar. There you have it. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. Also, I do have one honorable mention for the month because it is not spooky at all, but it is a comic book that I read. And that is Brian Lee O'Malley's Lost at Sea. This is just a singular graphic novel. It's not in a series or anything. Brian Lee O'Malley is the guy that made Scott Pilgrim, which I love so much. And I've been trying to read more of his work because I just really enjoy his style. I love the way that he writes. He's really funny, really witty but also it's just super relatable. Like everything he writes, you're just like, yeah, I feel that. And I 100% felt that when I was reading this, my God. It's sort of hard to explain without it sounding really boring <laughs> because the story itself is like nothing, nothing really happens. It's just like this girl who's kind of on a road trip with some people that she sort of knows, but not really. But it's less of that and more of just getting inside of her head, learning about her and these other people. And a lot of the pages I was reading and I was just like, me. <laughs> Same, yes, I feel this. But it sort of captures adolescence and feeling super alone and super just not relating to anyone. And also just the idea of anxiety, the feelings of depression and just feeling alone and kind of feeling like you have no soul sometimes. Just the, the concept of feeling nothing is a big thing in this. And I don't know, it really spoke to me. It has that cute, quirky style of Brian Lee O'Malley, which is difficult to describe unless you have read his work, but it's just this great combination of being funny and silly and a little bit weird, but also being very charming and lovable. I really, really enjoyed this book and it has a special place in my heart. So yeah, I would highly recommend reading this or checking it out if you're into that kind of thing. But that's it for my spooky comic book and book wrap up. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I didn't read too much, I guess, but you know, I watched a lot of movies and TV shows. If you watched my last video, you will know that. I would love to hear what your favorite spooky book or spooky comic book is. Let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this video and I will see you guys next time. Bye.